Hello, my name is Louise Bailey and today we're going to explore the world of semiconductors. Semiconductors are a special type of material that have revolutionised many areas of technology and are increasingly influencing our everyday lives. Semiconductors are used in a variety of applications, ranging from backlighting for mobile phones, um, data storage and use in toys. And the, these are a few examples here. There are two main types of applications for semiconductors, light emitters and light sensors. Light emitters give off light, and the main example being a light emitting diode. While the light sensors absorb light and in some cases convert this into electricity, as with the solar cell found in, in old calculators. Semiconductors have huge potential, and their advantages include being extremely small, highly reliable, highly efficient, relatively inexpensive, and resistant to heat and radiation. For example, light emitting diodes produce light that is bright, highly focused, and it does not flicker and produce heat like the tungsten bulbs. So what is a semiconductor? A semiconductor is a material that has properties ranging between those of a metal and an insulator. Electricity can flow easily in a metal, while in a semiconductor there is a barrier to the flow. So in a semiconductor, the particles cannot move easily. But as this diagram shows, the particles that produce electricity in a metal can have any energy, while for the semiconductor, there is a, a, a range of energies that the particles cannot have. So this area here, the particles are forbidden from having this energy range. For my research, I shine light onto my semiconductor. You can see the photon here. This light interacts with an electron and excites this electron to a higher energy. If the light does not have enough energy, then the electron does not become excited and therefore the light passes through my sample. Whereas if the light has enough energy, then it excites the electron up to the higher level and the photon is completely absorbed. Therefore, when we shine light of different energies onto my sample and detect which light is passing through, we can see the low energy light that is not being absorbed, and then the light starts being absorbed when there is enough energy to excite the electron over the barrier. So here is an example of my work. So here we've got nitride semiconductors with different barrier heights, and here you can see that the photons are being absorbed at different energies. So this is the spectrometer that I use, and these are my indium gallium nitride samples. To perform absorption spectroscopy, I place the sample onto this section, and then the, the light comes out here and is reflect, reflected off of these three mirrors. The light then shines onto my semiconductor, and the light is either absorbed or passes through my sample, and then is reflected from this mirror into the detector. So next we scan the sample by varying the energy of the light coming in. Here the spectrometer is varying the energy and, and then detecting what light comes through. And so here the units are slightly different, so on the y-axis we have um, the percentage of light that's actually passing through the sample, and then this is in, in slightly different units, but still we can think of it as energy. So a lot of light is passing straight through the sample at low energy, and then this is the cutoff where the sample starts absorbing light. The properties of nitride semiconductors make them highly promising for light emitting, light sensing, and converting light into electricity. Increasingly in the future, these semiconductors will be used for computer displays, data storage beyond Blu-ray, communication, satellites and spacecraft, and security. The list is endless. Semiconductors have changed our everyday lives and will continue to do so. Increasingly in areas of energy consumption and production, the environment, defense, and space exploration.